If you're like me who loves the Atelier game so much, you end up playing almost every single one of their games. Or even a brand new player who just got curious about its latest releases and picked it up on impulse. Chances are, you've heard some common questions being asked about the Atelier games. Is there a time limit? Or how harsh is the time limit in this game? The Atelier series is famous for having an ever-changing and evolving gameplay. Many different ways of storytelling and gameplay mechanics have changed throughout the years, and it still continues to do so every game. Some of them have been very good, and thus gladly welcomed with open arms by its niche community, while some have been criticized by said community as something that completely changed, even ruined the game. One of these arguments have been over the issue of time limits, so much so that there are countless discussions out there about the issue. Seeing as it, it is one of the most prevalent disagreements between fans, I decided to make a video to discuss the question, Atelier Series, Time Limits or No Time Limits? For those who don't know or are unfamiliar with the games, the Atelier series is a JRPG video game series focused on a story-rich gameplay centered around the idea of alchemy. You travel around the game's world, collecting all kinds of materials and recipes that will help you grow into becoming a powerful alchemist and achieve your goals and aspirations in the story. Now in this video, I will talk about the different positions different fans have over the time limit. First. We'll go over the points supporting the time limit, then we'll jump over to the points against it. Finally, I will give my own, which I think is a very unpopular opinion, about the time limits for the game by the end of the video. Let's go over the points in favor of time limits. A lot of the older, veteran fans of the Atelier series hold dear into their hearts the challenge and the direction that the time limits offer. They give you a very solid framework and goal to reach for yourself, usually a couple of months or weeks depending on the story of the game you're playing. Players in support of the time limit argue that these limits give the game much of the challenge and fun involved in gathering the materials and the synthesis in your alchemy pauldron. This is best shown in the Arlen Trilogy, the series' perhaps most popular trilogy judging by the success it had with the number of copies it had sold over the years. The Arlen Trilogy, comprised of Atelier Rorona, Atelier Totori, and Atelier Meruru all had time limits. They generally give you three years of in-game time to achieve a specific goal that will then allow you to unlock an extension of two more years in order to finish up on the main story and, hopefully, unlock the true ending along with most, if not all, of the endings for each of the main characters. Atelier Rorona was the very first Atelier game that I personally played back in 2010 when it was first released. The basic story of Atelier Rorona is that you, as Rorona, will have to complete multiple assignments that will be given to you every three months to prevent your little lovable Atelier from being closed forever. That's right, every three months you will have an assignment that you will need to accomplish. This includes adventuring and gathering the necessary materials, battling and defeating certain monsters, and, of course, the bread and butter of all the Atelier games, synthesizing using your alchemy in order to accomplish these tasks. Atelier Totori and Atelier Meruru follow a little bit of a different route when it comes on the deadlines of your tasks, but overall, they follow the same formula. You need to be very careful, though, as moving through the map, gathering materials, and performing synthesis uses up valuable time that may cause you a failure and a bad ending if you're not careful. But by the same token, the time limits are not so harsh as to make the game unplayable or torturously difficult. Unless you're trying to actually fail the game, 
chances are you will do just fine most of the time. This is the time limit many of the hardcore fans of the Arlen Trilogy absolutely love. And I can't blame them. Personally, one of my favorite games in the series is Atelier Totori. It still has a strict time limit, but it's not as hectic and pressuring as Atelier Rorona. In fact, I believe that Atelier Rorona is the game that has the strictest time limit mechanic of all in the entire series. True to form, the time limits in this trilogy, mostly in Rorona, gave these three games much of their structure. It made the game very enjoyable, and rarely will you find yourself loitering around in an area, wasting time, because you're busy trying to catch up to the clock that is constantly running every time you do something. It also gave the game most of its challenges. I remember one of the hardest things I ever tried to do in the Arlen Trilogy was the expansion of the population of Arles in Atelier Meru. I was constantly trying my hardest to finish quests and missions in order to continue bringing in more people to expand the kingdom. The time limits didn't make it that easy, but I had this sense of fulfillment when I had finished the main story, and boy was Atelier Meruru incredibly fun. And that's one of the big points pro time limit players are pointing out is that the game can become stale and boring if you remove the time limits. The game, according to them, was originally designed to be a resource and time management game in order to challenge the player in balancing the proper use of both time and resources and minimizing wastage in order to achieve the goals set upon him or her by the story. In the Mysterious Trilogy, especially in Atelier Sophie, Time limits were completely removed, and this has led some time limit enthusiasts to feel that they sometimes go without direction and purpose, getting lost and confused in the game's main story because there's nothing pushing them to go for their goals. In contrast, in the Arlen series, you need to carefully balance the amount of days you leave town and gather materials and the same goes for the time you will spend upon starting with your synthesis. Not only that, you also need to worry and pay attention to the other resources that you have, like different materials and traits in the said materials. This made the game very rewarding. It made you feel like you accomplished something. You're not just randomly adventuring about, exploring new areas, but you were learning to budget your time, efforts, and attention into the goals for that specific limit. It makes the game less brain-dead, monotonous, and routine for some people. For time limit advocates, the time limit is one of the mechanics in the game that makes the Atelier games what they are. They make them unique and separate enough from the common turn-based JRPG games that appeal to this niche audience in particular. For them, Removing the time limit kind of removes a big chunk of the soul and the identity of the game, so much so that some people have actually said that they have skipped some of the newer games because of the lack of time limits. Some people have even gone so far as to tell other Atelier fans that they are not true fans of the game if they do not like having time limits in place. This is a very strong case of the no true Scotsman fallacy being committed as the Atelier games are so much more than just the time limit. Which brings us to... Having no time limits in place, especially in the main story, has changed a lot of the dynamics and overall direction players will have in handling the game. One of the most obvious things that result in having no time limits set upon the game is that the player suddenly has a vast amount of freedom to move around the map and explore the world in ways that were unimaginable if you have them. Activities like gathering materials and fighting monsters on the side are now much more enjoyable because you can do them to your heart's content and not worry about getting a bad ending simply because you have missed the deadline of that quest that Stark has handed out to you, and now you feel bad about yourself because your workshop is going to get shut down. 
This opens many possibilities in gathering items that make them somewhat easier and more straightforward compared to just picking up the materials, making the clock go forward, and being disappointed that the material nor traits that you wanted were not picked up during that visit to that area. This has caused me to just reload the game time and time again to make sure that I am not wasting time. Obviously, this is not a problem when you have no time limits. You can just go to the area, gather the materials that you need, and just wait for them to respawn or just come back to the area and repeat the process until you get the materials and traits that you want. You can even discard the materials that have low quality then and there, so you wouldn't have a cluttered useless pile of low quality materials at the bottom of your container back at base. There's also the issue with continuity. Many times in the Arlen trilogy have I nearly finished the entire main story, including getting the extension and all of the character endings, and noticed that there have been some recipes that I haven't even synthesized once. And after you get to the end of the time limit, the whole game ends, forcing you to start the game from the very beginning once more. This hasn't really settled well with fans who want to play the post-game at their leisure, beating up secret bosses and improving what would at that point be very powerful items and equipment. They might also want to try their hands more on like said recipes that they haven't done or not done enough. But since the game ends after the end date, it just feels like the game has been cut short and you are forced to just accept the fact that all that you have done is finished. You're forced to stop your current playthrough and that seems to be no fun at all. Another advantage of not having time limits in the game is that you can synthesize all you want. Having this freedom in performing your alchemy is great because you can try and get your hands really really dirty in performing synthesis. You can experiment in making all kinds of manners of bombs, healing potions, stat buffing potions, poisons, armor, and weapons to your heart's content. You can make them incredibly overpowered, or you can make them fit a specific character if you're really, really deep into that role-playing part of the game. I remember this one time in Atelier Sophie that I made Sophie into a master poisoner, and Corneria as a master healer, sort of like a priestess. Sophie is the only character allowed to use poisons, and Corneria was the only character allowed to use the healing items. Is this the best and most efficient form of fighting enemies, and especially the bosses late in the game? No, but the point is that you are being immersed in a role-playing game, and People often forget that the Atelier series is a role-playing game. It's also just relaxing. Having no time limit makes the game less of a pain to play for people who are just seeking some relaxation and fun at the end of a long day of hard work and study. There's no point to get good in the game because at the very end of the day, it's a single-player game that relies more on the storytelling and role-playing mechanics to make it enjoyable and fun for people playing it. It's not a competitive game. It's not a game where people are trying to beat the time limit by a landslide and then stand all proud and happy that they have finished it. Atelier is a series that is comprised of cute things that the cute girls do in the game, alongside the interactions that they have with other characters. One of the things that make the Atelier game special in my view is that the interactions between the characters are lighthearted and, more often than not, quite entertaining and enjoyable. It's very relaxing to just sit back in a certain segment of the game and watch as a cutscene reveals a humorous and oftentimes very silly moment that leaves you smiling afterwards. The problem with time limits is that they are the antithesis of exploration and experimentation. If it takes you three days just to get to the field that's really just about an hour's walk outside of the city, and collecting a handful of nameless grass takes a third of the day, it severely limits your abilities to actually do alchemy. And this is the point that many of the no-time-limit players are saying, that 
Having no time limits allows you to actually try all kinds of things that gets you in the same mindset of the character. Every single one of the alchemists we've met in the series have their own different challenges and goals, but almost all of them have something in common. And that is that they want to try and learn about alchemy, to experiment with it, to test their items out, to improve their skills and to become the best alchemist that they can ever be by adventuring and trying out alchemy with their very own hands. For the No Limit Advocates, this is the true bread and butter of the Atelier games. It's about enjoying the humor, enjoying the character interactions, and most of all, enjoying the crafting system that has been changing and improving as the games continue to evolve. The spirit of the game is about the spirit of doing alchemy. It's about the spirit of crafting items and equipment that you want and that you need in order to become a better alchemist. You get good with alchemy because the crafting is fun and interesting, or because you pride yourself at being good with crafting systems. When the Dusk Trilogy alchemists try to save their dying world, when the Arlen Trilogy alchemists discover the world outside of their hometowns, or when the Mysterious Trilogy Alchemists use alchemy to reach their ambitions. They all have that one thing that they keep close to them that makes them succeed time and time again in their respective stories. And that is their love for alchemy. Having the same mindset as the main characters of the games makes the game so much more enjoyable and meaningful than just having a time limit. For me, I love the Atelier games. I love having both time limits and having none. But I do tend to lean more on the side of not having them. As I have explained just a moment ago, I love the idea of being in the same mindset as the character. I want to try the alchemy. I want to experiment with it, learn it, and become better at it so I can help the MC in her story. Personally, I think the addition of the time limits in the game just adds a very artificial challenge that just got shoehorned in in order to add some artificial urgency. Having no time limit at all seems to be the norm now and I completely welcome that. I had a lot of fun playing the Mysterious Trilogy as I did playing the Arlen and Dusk Trilogies if not more. And with the recent games of Atelier Lulua and Atelier Ryza, that has just cemented, at least in my book, that having no time limit makes these games better. But I do have quite an unpopular opinion about time limits, and that for me, Atelier Furious has done the best kind of time limit in any of the Atelier games with it. Atelier Furious is very forgiving, quite on the same level as Meruru and Totori when it comes to its one-year time limit. You need to do all kinds of quests along the way, or you can just rush the main story as fast as you can, both things you can do as well in Arlen and some of the Dusk games. The good thing that I absolutely love about Atelier Furious is that once you have completed a main story goal, that is, to get to the city of Reisenberg and become a licensed alchemist, you will then be given a choice whether you want to try NG+, or to continue with the game. If you chose the latter, time limits imposed onto you will completely be removed, allowing you to go wild and explore the amazing world that Furious absolutely loves. And that is why Atelier Furious has a special place in my heart. Even though it was not as successful as Sophie or Lady and Sewell, the fact that both the time limit and the no time limit parts of the game make sense, and at the same time, it gets you to play and actually get into the same mindset as Ferris herself, is something really no other Atelier game has done before. 
it does not have an artificial urgency in it because you're chasing the one year time limit. The time limit for Atom Your Furious is very, very lenient. But the fact that it is the storytelling that tells you to go to Reisenberg because you idolize Sophie and you want to meet her again and become an alchemist she can be proud of as your teacher, that is something else. But whether you like time limits or no time limits, the fact is that the Atelier series is a gaming franchise that continues to evolve. It might change in ways people will disagree upon, but at its core, as long as the love for cute girls doing cute things and the love for alchemy stays within a person, I believe that the Atelier games will continue to deliver their light-hearted, fun, and enjoyable stories and games long into the future as they have done so in the last two decades. What do you think of the time limit mechanic in the Atelier games? Do you like them or not? Or do you have an unpopular opinion about the mechanic as well? Tell me about it in the comments section, and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more contents like these. I would try to improve more as the channel grows. So long for now, see you on the next one.